All right. Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Judith. Um, I'm in conversation today with David Farmer. David is, is a realized being. He's in Scotland at the moment. And hello, David. Hi, Judith, how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. And um, we shall have a conversation today about the last steps before realization. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say about your final steps before? Yeah, um, my final, final stages. You know, it's kind of weird to talk about it in terms of sort of stages and processes. There yeah. really is. Ultimately, there is. No yeah, ultimately, there is. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting that uh, you know we some so a lot of people go through sort of uh, um, changes in relationships or changes in, in work situations. Um, uh, in my case, I I, I went through um, about um, six months or so before there was a sort of a recognition of my true nature. Um, there was a, a, a bit of turmoil um, going on. Um, in my uh, private life and in work situation as well um, where there was uh, just when we were having that little chat just before we, we pressed record there you, were, you mentioned that um, um, sometimes you need to be there's this feeling of needing to be peaceful where the outside world is, is sort of uh, um, uh, pulling you away from that mm. and uh, yeah I certainly felt, uh, felt that and that was part of the probably part of the reason for a um, sort of relationship breakdown because um, yeah I really need I felt this need to just be quiet just be still you know um, so yeah it's an interesting point that you mentioned about that yes yes I felt that too I felt the need to be quiet and still because the internal was changing and shifting and changing and mm -hmm. therefore um, it was I needed to actually listen more so I needed to be silent and still and listen more and just allow, which mm -hmm. um, is the effortless being. So yes. I was actually just simply allowing and my painting was taking a different turn as well. And, um, and I needed to really be present with what was, uh -huh. what was coming through because it was nothing that I'd ever done before. <laughs> you know, I used to be... A, <laughs> A realist painter before and um these were just strange paintings coming out and <laughs> very peaceful and calm but i didn't understand them and so i needed that space in order to mm -hmm. understand me as well mm -hmm. of what was happening mm -hmm. with me so um yes let's talk a little bit more about what you think um is an important um distinction or identification in mm. terms of um it was interesting that that point you just mentioned about um feeling intuitively the need for space and and just to let things flow and and uh, i had a sort of similar experience really where i started reading a lot more about taoism oh. and uh uh, really towards the end of the last year I, I'd always had a copy of the Tao Te Ching which is one of my all-time all favorites um, but I picked up right I picked up another uh, couple of texts on that and I found myself really um, feeling this need to flow and uh, just allow things to take their natural course and and uh, I had quite a few instances of um, feeling very very peaceful and feeling sort of in that flow um, but of course, you know, the mind sort of kicks in again later or some life circumstance comes in and draws you back into that um, again. But it's only really until that, that sort of recognition comes yep. uh, uh, of, of your true nature and you, you realize that uh, the, the, the I that you thought that you were um, doesn't exist and never did exist. Yes. And you always are. You always are in that flow. It yes. always is just manifesting. It always is just happening. But you, because you falsely identified with uh, uh, an I, because you believe yourself to be a separate individual, um, mm -hmm. then you there's all this sort of suffering that comes along with with that, and you know the seeking for happiness and the avoiding suffering. Yeah. Um, 
But um, yes, it, it's, it's funny that um, a few months before this recognition occurred, um, there was a sort of uh, going into needing this need, feeling this intuitively, this need for um, being silent, being alone. Mm. And, um, and so it was interesting now that you, I look back on it and say, oh, it's interesting at that time I started reading a bit about um, Taoism and, and just letting things, letting things flow. You know? <laughs> it's funny because you, you, go, you remember back to what it was. You actually don't recognize, well, in my case, I didn't recognize at the time what was, you know, the, the process or anything because you don't. Right. And, but in retrospect, I go, oh, so that's what happened. That's what was going on. <laughs> and um, so it's, it's interesting that you should say that. Um, there was a point where I actually stopped reading and stopped searching and, and everything. I just, yes. it just stopped. I just stopped. Yes. I was like, enough. Yes. And um, I mean, my um, process began way back in the early 2000s, like yours did. Uh -huh. um, and I think a lot of us were waking up at that time, really having the first big glimpse at that time. And then it was a process after that. But as I was talking to David Bingham and um, I said to him, most of my life, I was awake and I didn't know. I really struggled to be in the world. That was my, my thing. It was I came from the other, other perspective where I struggled to actually be in the world. And um, so it was normal for me to just be withdrawn and, you know, in my own space and creative and, and in the flow. So I actually had an awakening. I, I would call it an awakening um, seven years ago, six years ago, where I actually had, there was a rude awakening where I had to understand how the world operated because I wasn't quite sure about that aspect mm -hmm. so i needed to understand how the world operated so that was a the gift in the discombobulation because everything, right. everything is in the end you know it's all a gift of the soul to us for our expansion because ultimately um all relationships we have are about knowing ourselves fully right so um so yes everything is a blessing and then you realize yeah, that's, that's right yeah you know, i think you know yeah i think a lot of people maybe feel that of course you know this can really happen to anybody even people who have never even been spiritual seekers or or have never even considered spirituality it can just suddenly come and that's the reason because there's no there's not any i who's in control of it um and so but but when we do sort of look back and 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 think oh you know especially people that had been seeking for a while they may have had several sort of recognition or realizations or aha moments mm -hmm. along the way or even experiences some kind of spiritual experience um, um and um yeah i mean it, it, it's often the case it certainly seems to be in your case and mike and in and, and mine that i always felt like i didn't quite fit in mm. and uh, i was always questioning yes. um uh questioning the world why why do i feel like i don't fit in um why do i always seem to be by myself end up by myself alone yeah. sort of any time um and, and and not that it was a, a particularly bad thing but just mm. feeling that they need to have your own space, be by yourself, mm. and not quite fitting in somehow. And um, I, I certainly uh, felt that. And uh, yeah, quite quite possibly. I mean, uh, there are many moments. I mean, when we talk about the, the identification with the I, which is the big problem, but there are really many moments throughout your life where the I doesn't exist, even, even yeah. in one day. There's, there's uh, so many uh, moments in a day where the I um is not there and you're functioning perfectly well yeah. um but it, it'll always come you know kick in again kick in because that identification is there and it's only really when um it finally uh the mind finally realizes oh there's no oh there is no i yeah. um then when that final rec recognition um comes um and then you're finally free of that yeah um, but that 
say, um, and I think this is kind of where we're going with this conversation, that it's not to say that that is the end in any way and you finally made it and that's it. Woo-hoo. And it's really, that's not quite uh, the case, that um, there is uh, integration that then comes. That's right. And, um, and which is really a sort of an, a real endless integration, really, I think. Um, it's just a constant sort of uh, refining. I think um, a lot of people, when if they are spiritual seekers or they have been, um, you know, on, on the path, if you want, for a while, um, there is this idea that, that um, once you get this enlightenment or awakening whatever you want to call it i mean it's none of these things but for, for conversation's sake uh we, we we call it that and once you get there it's kind of like a checkered flag like uh, that's right you're perfect now that's right that's right uh, but and also it it um as you said it the integration then actually has the the imbalances there might still be some imbalances which is what i was referring to and that had to to be understood you know understood yes. because i think no. hmm. sorry go on well i think that's something that's not really talked about too much and and well in a way you know i can understand that that you know if if there is a, a spiritual seeker who who knows that um um this realizing your true nature is not sort of the end of the road mm. um then indeed hamper them from continuing that yes. process yes um so in, in a way you can kind of understand why it's not been sort of talked about but um you know that there is uh, you know if you can imagine that people have been identifying with this the the, the this I, um, identifying themselves as an individual person for quite a while. (laughs) And that just doesn't suddenly uh, drop in the sense that there's a certain momentum there. Um, The position that you're no longer, uh, that you're not and never were an individual person, that drops, yes. But Mm. because of that release of energy, um, because it takes a lot of energy to maintain that sense of I, Yes. Um, quite tough and, and you can recognize that for yourself uh, just yeah. walking in the street we've all seen these people with this real sense of eye and they really look kind of so hard <laughs> and yes. faces are all up and and, um, and they seem so hard you know yeah. um, because it takes a lot of energy to maintain that and so when that drops um, and then there's this re- sort of release of energy um then that uh, everything that you've shoved down into your subconscious, um, all that starts coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, very good thing, and it's perfectly normal, and perfectly natural. Um, and, but in the initial stage, it can really sort of you use this wonderful word discombobulate. So I, I love this because I, I, I recognize as soon as you said that that we have the same British comedy. <laughs> so, starting this sort of uh, yeah discombobulation or sort of um, alignment. Yeah. You do get sort of thrown out of alignment because you have identified with your as the body mind for for ages, mm. and um, and there may have been periods where you were much more intuitive or you felt particularly blissful, but there was that sort of gravity pulling you back down into the body, um, mm. and you know when when this the I the recognition that 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 you are infinite consciousness you are this open space of awareness and when that comes then this energy is there's a release and when there's a release there's a great and there's often accompanied by laughter and things but then you know you you've been sort of thrown out out of alignment a little bit and um and that takes a little bit to to Mm -hmm. to sort of uh, to get a hold of Mm -hmm. Um, something that helped me i i i was um taught around this time um when i had this um misalignment this compilation that um it was very good to think of things in terms of the five koshas which is your five bodies that you have yeah. um your your physical body energy body 
um, your mind, emotions, uh, intuition, and, and bliss body, all, of course, um, within and of consciousness. Um, and when you start being, you know, because you're, uh, you are quite blissful when this comes, you're immediately functioning completely from this bliss body, much more intuitive. And that's very useful, um, even if you're at the sort of seeking uh, stage. Yes. Um, to keep yourself aware, keep yourself functioning from intuition. Yeah. Because obviously we are destined uh, to function from intuition. That's that is right. the um, uh, uh, destiny of, this, of the human experience. Um, but it was very useful in the initial stages of this when you do feel sort of mm. out of a line mm -hmm. to really um, be aware of these five mm. um, yourself as these five bodies. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, starts, that really stabilizes things. Yes, stabilizes a lot. And so, yes, this in the initial stages, that was very, very useful, particularly in my case, particularly. Yeah, in mine as well. Because, um, mm. and it's, it's interesting how everything is working for, towards this for everyone, I'm sure, not just for a certain few, select few. And so I came to my beginning of this whole process because I, I began doing yoga just as as a, a course in my life because I was highly stressed um, right. at the age of 26 or something you know so it was a long time ago and um, and I forgot about it because life takes over and family and all of that and then I came back to it again and when I so I just went for a class because I felt so good and meditated and, and all of that since then I just went to a class and the teacher actually said to me, you should be a teacher. I'm doing some teacher training and I'd like if you would do the course because I want a few of you to take over. And so I did it and I was, you know, at quite a, a time in my life where everything was, you know, kind of falling apart and all of this. This was in the early 20s. But I did that. So I, I understood the philosophy of yoga because it was the the genuine hatha yoga and the philosophy that he was mm -hmm. genuine the he was from india and um he took us on a trip to india and all of that as well so i got the full gist of it and um that actually helped me through that initial period but it also brought up so much pent up emotional stuff at the same time <laughs> but because it's so powerful yoga is powerful you know it really moves the energy in your body and and gets any stuck energy out and so yeah. i found it really valuable yeah and i think people find benefit from having those type of practices mm -hmm. um and yoga, is yoga it, it, it sort of um gives you a bit of a structure and yeah. a stability um, because and also the fact that there was maybe a teacher there that, that, that was able to point you this way or that way um, that um, can for many people can be very very useful and and because you have that structure there um, if a recognition does um, come um, it, you, you don't get disal disaligned too badly um, I felt a similar um, thing because I did when I was living in Japan I, I've actually just moved back to Scotland uh, a month or so ago um, oh, I lived in Japan for uh, 18 years and uh, about the middle of my time I was in Japan I was doing Kyudo quite uh, regularly Kyudo is uh, Japanese uh, it's often known as Japanese Zen archery okay. uh, or just Japanese and um, uh, I, I, that was very uh, good in a way because it provided a sort of structure there. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, you were able to sort of uh, work on yourself, if you want to say that, and uh, within a sort of uh, a, a very solid structure yeah. um, of the cute the archery lessons with the teacher, etc. Mm -hmm. And and that was uh, very good for sort of um, providing you with that um, uh, ability to go into this space of sort of meditation or mm -hmm. clear neutral space. Yeah. Um, and and allowed you to have a, a sort of a um, 
a sort of safe environment really to yeah. to do that yeah. and I think that that really uh, gave me a, a bit of stability, mental stability, really, um, in that uh, I kind of knew what, intuitively also, but you, I kind of knew what was going on. And when I felt sort of changes occurring, mm -hmm. um, it didn't freak me out and, and I didn't worry uh, mm -hmm. too much about it. Um, there was this constant feeling that uh, everything's OK mm -hmm. uh, and it's perfectly normal and perfectly natural. And mm -hmm. so uh, I, I think that um those 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 practices that i did perhaps gave me a bit of mental stability yeah. um during the the, the time of, of this sort of um yeah, the change. but it, it's 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 an ongoing thing you know um and it's different for everyone for each person yeah. it's different so um i think that's why the more um of these sort of talks that we have people can see that there isn't a certain path that you follow. It's like, you've got to follow your own intuitive path. You know, That's you can't right. sit in a class for 20 years and expect to, to gain, you know, enlightenment. You really have to take responsibility and, and do your own work. And, um, and that's exactly right. I think that's an excellent point. And I think that's where a lot of people, particularly seekers get, um, yeah get kind of confused because in the very fact of seeking is that you're looking out of yourself exactly um, whether it's into a book uh, whether it's into a youtube video uh, whether it's into a uh, you go to sit in front of a teacher um but that very fact of relying on some something else outside of yeah apparently i would say apparently outside of yourself um that um that actually stops you from from recognizing because um, you're relying on these things, um, and then uh, you 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 you're not you're not um, uh, relying on your own intuition. You're not yeah. you're not exactly. um, stuff. And the only, of course, the answer to to all of this is only within yourself. And so, uh, being able to to have to to that's why sort of giving up it often happens when people sort of give up i think you you mentioned to me either, either before or after we started recording but you mentioned that you were you sort of gave up reading and gave up you thought oh that's enough of that and i did too and a lot of people get to that because finally the mind gets exhausted yes and finally realize well this is not working <laughs> and you read you read all these books your bookshelves are full of spiritual yes. books and uh, you know, you've you've listened to all this and that, and and you, you, but there's something there that you just, you know, it's not you're not quite getting it, and so it's only when you step back from that and you try to you you start to intuitively feel well, what is why do I have all these questions? These I've got all these questions and I'm not getting any answers, and you start to funnel down the questions, mm. and um, because ultimately, you know, all these questions really come down to like three or four questions. And then ultimately, it really <laughs> only comes down to one question, which is, "Who am I?" Yeah. And uh, there's there's a wonderful. <laughs> I, I I watched a, a YouTube video a few months back of there's there's a, a, an Indian guru who's very famous on YouTube at the moment, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody asked him in a question and answer thing. Somebody asked him, "Who am I?" And he says, "Well, why are you asking me?" <laughs> I thought it was absolutely brilliant, and it just immediately um, uh, it destroys that whole um, idea that you have to get the answer from somebody else. Yes. Um, who else is going to tell you the answer to who am I except yourself looking inside? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's when you get down mm -hmm. back inside and you start feeling that you're relying on that your own intuition, and that's going to, you know, um, point you in the right direction. I think there's a place for um, those sorts of classes and, and groups. There's a place for it. Um, you know, there are people who need some sort of structure and they need that kind of assurance, perhaps. Yes. Um, so there certainly is a place for it. And there is a place for, you know, meditating for 30 years or whatever. I certainly didn't. <laughs> My practice became a meditation just being became a meditation you know everything i did was a meditation it came yes. it came down to that 
uh, when I stopped seeking, it was like enough already. And um, then everything just became a, a meditation. My walk in the morning was a meditation. Yep. Correct. And everything was just, I was getting back into my own alignment and my own listening. And yeah, so that's that's really interesting. You were talking about that. Um, I was also interested in talking about Kali Yuga and Sat Yuga. Mm. Um, the the different ages they they call it. So we're at the end of of Kali Yuga. But my belief on this is, and I'd like your your input in on this as well. My belief is Sat Yuga is us coming into our own balance. Mm and moving forward in that way, in a, you know, embodying um, or not embodying because we're not a body, but you know what I'm saying, just coming into yeah. our full realisation, I think that's what Sat Yuga is all about. And the more people that, you know, uh, recognise or realise this, that's what that is about. And Kali Yuga is the inverted system where there's power and dominance and all of that and in in both it's an imbalance of of the the old power structures and the, the masculine energy which is in both male and female mm -hmm. so you know we see um in that my going back into that world to actually understand it there was a lot of aggression in women mm -hmm. you know in order to in order to actually be powerful, but that's actually not what you're meant to be. The mm -hmm. true feminine is receptive and intuitive and understands her own source of power, which is power, you know, the, the consciousness really is your yes. own source of power, your beingness. So all of those sort of, I was able to actually see the contrast, which was brilliant. I saw the contrast to who I really am, as opposed to what was actually going on out there. And I was able to then understand it. So you can navigate it a bit easier. Mm. We're not like the monks, you know, sitting in a in, um, cave up in the Himalayas and, and not seeing any, anyone for the rest <laughs> of our lives. We have to still be here. What do you yeah, think? so you know this idea that to to be receptive um, mm -hmm. is is really excellent, and and uh, yeah, you know ultimately um, this is the the ultimate power, if you want to say that, is that that um, we are all infinite consciousness, we are all this receptive, we are this this yeah. receptive, field. and um, allowing yourself to be that, whether you're male or female, um, mm -hmm. I think what you're yeah, is that women are maybe naturally more in, uh, intuitive and more receptive. Yeah. Um, but really, I mean, this is available to absolutely uh, to everybody. And um, but what you're saying there about the the receptiveness is wonderful because um, when you are as mm -hmm. moving through life as infinite conscious, not as the person, but yeah. as this yield of emptiness, you allow everything, and you mm -hmm. allow everything as it is and that goes for other parent entities that you you meet other parent people yes. um, not feeling that you have to force anything on them to change them in any way um, mm -hmm. to just allow it to be as it is yeah. and and that also goes for um going back to what we we're saying about the integration that, that that also goes for whatever comes up for you um during this period of um uh, integration where the subconscious uh, things are coming up um, things that you've pushed down or whatever for years and years um, there may be life uh, circumstances that appear which will trigger this or that and so um, but this is a constant process yeah. but the, the point is that when the when the person is not there and the, the eye is not there and you're just now moving through yeah. life in this you know, one you know, Taoist uh, effortless flow, um, and then you allow everything to come up, and 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 within yourself also. So you are being totally receptive, totally open, 
mm -hmm. um, to open the field of consciousness, which allows everything because it is infinite yeah. and it is infinite love. Yeah. Which, uh, so whatever comes up in that um, is embraced Embrace. by exactly. and dissolved and dissolves into that there's no conflict um no, when, there's no fight anymore there's no aggression right. or fight anymore so it's just that's allowed right. to be I, I like the way you say embrace it which is yeah just embrace it you know and push it away just bring it forward because it's all part of who i am when when you <laughs> we finally see that there's nothing else it's yeah so this uh, embracing is, is becomes very, very refined, more and more and more refined as you, you know, um, in the beginning, you know, when you are sort of misaligned and you feel, oh, what's going on? That I'm not this person anymore. And mm -hmm. all these feelings are coming up. And then sometimes you get this thing that um, you think, well, I, I've had this re recognition and you know this shouldn't be coming up or that shouldn't be coming up which is just a sort of um even though there is this recognition happens um there has been such an identification with a person for some time there's still a sort of um some people describe it as a sort of gravitational pull of or sort of magnetism mm. which you need to um sort of eventually break out of yep. you you need to be um very very aware um of these um big subconscious um all the subconscious stuff that comes up and sometimes very very obvious in the beginning mm. but as as you accept that okay accept that and let it be and then as it starts to dissolve mm. um they get more and more and more subtle it's a constant refining so uh, you may have times where everything's going wonderfully smoothly and then some life situation or some family member or something somebody says something which just triggers you know oh, where does that come from yeah and oh look. um but it's a it's it's a different process now because there's no as you said there's no conflict there's nobody saying i shouldn't be thinking that i shouldn't be doing that yes exactly that's open awareness and whatever comes up is allowed to to be um because and it's not it even not Sorry, because there's no longer any identification with it. So it can be allowed, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. That's right. And so this everything is allowed and, and everything is um it's it's a constant sort of refining of that, really, which is really never never ending. Um the stuff will, will continue to to come up and bubble up and things that you've sensed and perceived and you continue to sense and perceive. It's just you're not you don't hold on to it you don't grab onto it it's just mm -hmm. comes into the field of awareness and is allowed to be and, and it dissipates yeah um that will that will continue that's why um you know it's a constant process and a wonderful process that's why a lot of people may think that there's some kind of finality like you get it and yes. that's it you're perfect and and really that's um, not everything will be yeah, rosy but yeah yeah it's not like that. It's good to actually um, highlight that because, um, well, if somebody has that, great, but it's not my experience. And uh, I don't think it will really be anybody's experience. I as long <laughs> I don't think so either. As long as they're having the human experience, um, then there will be this constant um, feel, this refinement that needs to take place. And really, all it means by refinement is that as the infinite awareness you're functioning from your intuition mm. and how we're we're supposed to function um and anything that comes up is noticed and dissolved it's not even a letting go because letting go feels like there's something that you don't like and you have to get rid of it it's yeah. not even that something is coming up and oh okay and it dissipates and things dissipate quicker because there's nobody who's grabbing onto it yeah. I so it's like the word Mm. you think i like the word yeah, I like, yeah yes anything positive is good i think <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. anything allowing uh, some people call it welcoming whatever you like as long as there's not any resisting because as we know this very famous phrase which gets yeah. banded about whatever you resist persist which is absolutely true yeah. so any 
we'll just uh, we'll just uh, allow this to continue. But yeah. you're just allowing it. It's there. You welcome it because you are infinite love, infinite awareness, and 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 then if and you everything arises within you within yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and so I, I think I was going back to mentioning Taoism because I really love love some of that philosophy, and yeah. a lot of people kind of feel that um, you know there is an end, and 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 but when you people who tend to feel that have this sort of I know kind of attitude, you know I've got to I know, and of course the famous line in the Tao Te Ching is whoever says they know does not know. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And that really sort of echoes this whole thing that we're talking about, that whereas it's just a, it's just a continual flowing. There's a continual flowing. It always has been a continual flowing. Uh, it always has been like that. Exactly. Um, continuing like that. And it's just that there's now there's this, there's I, this I, identification. There's been a recognition, a recognition of who you really are. Mm. And, and you're continuing to flow as you have been. Um, but and everything that's just coming up is allowed to just dis is just dissipates easily, and 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 this sort of refining process just this goes on and on and on and on, and then you just flow with it and enjoy enjoy the ride until you've had enough, and then you can say, "See you later, I'm leaving." <laughs> 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 you can just uh, step out, you know, have an experience, and that's it. That's, that's it. Yeah. Experience. I love this. That's right. A lot of people, you know, they, they live can live in a beautiful place in the countryside and they don't see the beauty because they're constantly just stuck inside of their own heads. Yes. And uh, thinking about this and worrying about that and whatever it might be. And they don't see the beauty uh, all around them. And I think that little story that you've told there really. Uh, but it's uh, not necessarily the landscape. It's about anything. It's like how you perceive a situation is how you know it will um or much more open to yeah. to things as they really are mm -hmm. um i wrote a little uh piece on on my blog page a few weeks ago about being in the zone which is very interesting and i was having a, a chat with another musician and um uh, also a sports psychologist a friend of mine uh, we were talking about being in in the zone and um how that you know artists can can get into the state of sort of uh uh effortlessness and, and no no thinking um yet still not ultimately realize the true being some may but many don't and what is the the the, the reason uh for that uh as an artist, do you have some uh, comment about being in the zone in this when you're painting? Perhaps there's this sort of feeling of effortless flowing. Yes, um, I don't do a lot of painting anymore um, because that dropped as well. When you know my identity disappeared, it was like, oh, geez, everything's gone. Even my painting is gone. But um, and I felt lost. I felt really sad actually because everything just disappeared. But I do remember, actually, I did a painting about um, two years ago, and I redid it. I've done some since then, but I got the urge to re redo it about, say, two months ago now. It was quite a turbulent painting, and it, uh, it was of um, the ocean, but there was turbulence and there was like something coming out of it. So I kept resisting the urge but then I, I went okay I'll just do it so I got in there and it's now a very calm painting mm -hmm. and I knew okay I'm coming back into that place of complete calm stillness and um, the absolute is the ocean as I was um, referring to so I went yep got that and um, so I shared it on one of my groups that I'm on art groups mm -hmm. and uh, spiritual group and I asked them to feel into it. What do you feel from it? And they all said, calm, presence. Mm -hmm. Good. Because that's really what art's about. It's to, to engage the source, isn't it? Mm. It's to, even music. I mean, music's even better at it. Of just getting the senses straight away. 
Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's interesting you're saying that uh, you 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 stopped painting for for a while, and this is one interesting point that I've been uh, thinking about when I was dis discussing with people about the zone, and that people uh, do enter this state of effortless flow, um, mm -hmm. but um, even within that, there's still an identification <clears throat> with the person, mm -hmm. still this identification that you are a musician or you are a painter, yes. and um, we, and that kicks back in as soon as the activity is, is finished. So whether it's a, a painting that you're doing or whether it's a piece of music you're, you're playing, performing, or whether you're in a, a sports game, if you're playing a tennis game or whatever it might yes, be, yes. Um, that you do get into this sort of flow. But it's because it comes, it's sort of a mechanical, it mm. comes from the, it's quite mechanical in the way that you've, in the case of a musician or, for example, a sports person, you've trained your body in this way. You've gone through this rip repetitious um, te technical training uh, for whatever instrument or even an artist technique in that, of course, and in and, and a sport, there's te technique involved. Um, and so entering this space of no mind is within this repetitive activity. Mm -hmm. So it's very goal orientated that you're, you're going into this to play the piece of music well, to win the game. And, and then within that, you may enter this sort of state of no mind, but it's highly unlikely mm. that the, the person will then recognize their, that their true nature because there's this identity, as soon as the piece is finished or the, the game's finished, there's the, I did it, I won, the I comes back in mm. and there's this reaction vacation as a musician or as a sports person or whatever it was then so it was interesting to hear you say there that you actually stopped painting because I was a, a musician from the age of eight I used to play accordion and I went to a very famous music school in, in the UK to study and got my degree in music and mm -hmm. um and I had a career as a as a musician for a good few years but I also felt this need to stop it um, and I put music down. I, it was almost like I used this image of I needed to sort of climb this. I felt that I needed to climb this spiritual mountain. I needed I needed to find out who I really was. And to do so, I needed to put this whole baggage down, this yeah. heavy luggage of musicianship, being a musician. And I, I put all that down and got that sort of off my back and like, okay, and started on this sort of new, this path of seeking. Um, of course, this is always just part of the story, you know, it's <laughs> looking back. Yes. But um, it, it was just interesting when you mentioned that you stopped painting, um, that, that sometimes we, we, we do feel we need to put these things down or something becomes an obstacle. It actually, it just happened of its own, you know, volition. Yes. With, with me, I wasn't even seeking realisation. I actually wasn't. You know, I went into yoga because I was stressed <laughs> and yes. I needed to calm down. And so my life was quite stressful, yeah. And so that's how I just fell into everything along the way. I wasn't seeking at all. Uh, as a child, I used to think, who am I? And why am I here? You know, and yes. what, what is this? So I do remember that. And I do remember now, I remember more bits and pieces from my childhood that, that I hadn't, uh, that I'd put away and hadn't thought about it. Yes. You know, where I used to actually just, zone out and go into this void and <laughs> to come back out again and I didn't even think anything of it but um it's really quite that's, interesting. that's right and then you do realize you, and you think oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah and you remember all this but way back to your childhood come back yeah and it's just that there was it was always there I mean you you were always cognizing it's just that you didn't you haven't recognized and that's all it is and it's so interesting that when we say it like this, we were always here, and yet we were not totally here. Yeah, yes. we were only here as a thought or a or a perception, and yes. that was it. Having an that experience, having an experience, and that was all. And when you see it that way, you go, oh. That's right. And that's why when it does come around, it's not an experience. But I think a lot of people expect it to be some wonderful experience, of course, because they're and maybe when they've been sort of seeking, they've had so-called spiritual experiences, but they're really sort of meaningless in a way because 
um, that's all just mind stuff. And the mind has, uh, has um, uh, constructed this idea that you're, you are restricted, that you're somehow limited. Mm -hmm. um, right from the age of about two years old, there's sort of this idea comes that, oh, here's me here and there's my mom there or there's, there's my dad there. And yeah. so there's this sort of the thought comes in that you're an individual person and then that sticks. <laughs> and so it's just a belief and it's just a thought in your head. And so therefore, because you've constructed this thought that you're limited, the mind also then has to construct a thought where you are unlimited because really you're just, all you're doing is, is looking to get back to wholeness yeah. again yeah that's all it is. and and of course the mistake is that you look for that wholeness in objects um and then it's only when you start to realize that you're not getting that happiness from objects in fact what's happening actually is that the object is revealing the happiness that already exists yes um and so your true nature is happiness but the mistake is that you think the object is giving you happiness and of course the object can never do so whether that object yeah, a, a, a car a new car a new house or a, a, a new partner a person whatever it is um that they can never um ever uh, give you lasting happiness because they they are also it is also changing mm -hmm. um so it's interesting so the mind has created this idea that it's limited um and then also there's therefore created this idea that it's not that's why it happens um this oh it's just a recognition in the mind oh yeah oh that's it mm. oh it's so, so simple and you're just oh great and then oh, and oh, in yeah. that moment of boomers everything is yeah. realized so, so you can't see it yeah yes yeah. great great conversation <laughs> thank you so much Did part of the questions and realizing what your true nature is, staying in that awareness, mm -hmm. recognizing your true self. Um, that is a bit everybody right at this moment. So yes, um, so I, much peace and and um, freedom in that. that right. um, 